I'm going to talk to you guys today a little bit about what God has placed upon my heart. Um, and he gave this message to me this week. So it's fresh and hot off the press. <laughs> uh, and my title thus far is Challenging God. So um, we know that God wants 100% of our heart. He wants 100% of our life. He wants everything that we are to be a gift. He gave it to us. He wants us to give it back to him. Amen. So in um, Malachi 3.10, it's talking about the tithe. And we know we should bring our tithe to honor God and to participate, precipitate his blessings without measure. I need somebody to help me preach today. Say without measure. So God wants to give to you without measure, but he also wants you to give to him without measure. Under the law, all he did was require a very paltry sum of 10%. It says, bring the full tenth into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. And we know the Lord of hosts is Yahweh's Sabaoth or Yahweh, the God of armies of heaven and of earth. Continuing on, it says, See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. Amen. Without measure. Okay, so God's abundance can be found in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus interacted with the Pharisees, they demanded a sign from Jesus to prove, they wanted him to prove that he was who everyone already knew and everyone already believed him to be. And Luke eleven twenty nine 29, it says, And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. In other words, you guys have already had signs, and I've been doing signs, and you haven't believed the signs yet, why would I do yet another sign that you're not going to believe? You can also look in Matthew 12, 38 through 39 about that. Uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, they already had plenty of signs from Jesus. Jesus did many miracles with thousands of eyewitnesses. Think of the feeding of the multitudes, the 5,000, and I believe there was maybe a 3,000 and a 4,000. Okay. These eyewitnesses could provide countless testimonies to the miracles that he performed. Imagine you go somewhere uh, to your favorite restaurant and they say, you know what? The meal's on us today. Okay. No miracle has been performed, but what are you going to do? Rush out and tell a few friends, right? I got a free meal at my favorite restaurant. Yeah. So Jesus was feeding all the people and the miraculous drove the message uh, throughout the towns. We know that Jesus' testimony about the Father is true. Amen. John 14, 9 says, Jesus said to them, Have I been among you all this time without your knowing me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? He was already showing them the Father because the Father was in him, operating through him to do all these signs and wonders. And we know that Jesus carries the spirit of truth. John 15, 26 says, When the counselors come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So Jesus was witnessing the reality of the Father in flesh here on earth. And the spirit of truth witnesses to who Jesus and the Father are. You see, the love of the world was not in Jesus. It was not in him. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you have a contrast again between the Father's love and the love of the world. Jesus manifested to his people the love of the Father and he did not love the world. Jesus speaks of remaining in the Father's love 
in John 15, 9 through 10, he says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. So Jesus and the Father were one. They were in love, and there were commandments given, which, as we recall, love the Father and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. There was a man sent by God. <laughs> All right? We know, we know this about John, right? But there was a man sent by God to rescue you from the bondage of sin, sickness, and death. Amen. So you have a threefold there. That cord, he broke it. The sin, sickness, and death, he destroyed it. He gives you the blessings of his spirit without measure. Amen. I need somebody to help me preach this one more time without measure. Amen. John 3.34, for God sent him, and he speaks God's words since he gives the Spirit without measure. Without wow. Measure. Wow. Measure. Imagine the blessings you can get with no measure to wow. them. That's incredible. And so all your sins are washed away, not just some, not just a few, but all of your sins, Acts 22.16. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. And wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. How do you get over the sin that you were in? You call upon the name of the Lord. Not only that, but all your stains are washed away. Don't you know that the sin will leave behind a stain? But it says in Zechariah 13, 1, On that day, a fountain will be opened for David's family. So we have a fountain coming for David and his descendants, and for those who live in Jerusalem to wash away both sin and stain. Amen. Not only will your sins be washed away, but also the stain of the sin shall be washed away. Amen. So my dad loves to show you guys the picture he drew of the little man, where it's you and me and us, and we know that Jesus died for you. Amen. There's a lot of talk about Jesus died for these people or those people, but I want to speak something directly to you today. If you're hearing my voice, Jesus died specifically for you. Amen. Yeah. Jesus died for you and me so that we could become us, so that we could be unified with him. <clears throat> Romans 8.34 says, Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Amen. So he has a body who he died for. We are unified together as one in Christ. You guys know this scripture, Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. There is no wall of separation anymore. All of the fleshly things of the earth have passed away. And when you step into the kingdom of heaven with God, you're one with him. Amen. Here's my concluding thought. Okay. So remain in Christ. Amen. Abide in Christ. Receive his spirit. Receive his blessings without measure. Amen. Without measure. There's no limit. Amen. There's no limit. 